VLS stands for Valk Last Slot because it was developed and popularized in part by Mats Valk. The idea is that once you pair up your last F12 pieces, if they pair up together like this, then instead of inserting it and then doing OLL, what you can do instead is use an algorithm that can solve OLL and the last slot at the same time. Now there are about 200 algorithms, so it is hard to learn, but if you just want to get started, then there's something called winter variation. Winter variation is a subset of VLS where the last layer edges are already oriented. So once you pair up your last slot pieces, then you do a slightly longer insert to skip OLL. Winter variation only has 27 algorithms, so it's far easier to learn. Matt Velk also used VLS in his former world record single. Sam! Yeah! Yeah! PB stands for personal best, whether it's your best solve, or your best average of 5, your best average of 100, or so on. And as we all know, your 2x2 two two PB single is the most important thing about you as a cuber. Yes, finally. Oh yeah, sub one. WCA stands for World Cube Association. And all world records or records of any sort, if it's an official world record, that means that it happened in a competition that is recognized by the WCA and runs by all of the WCA regulations. You can go on the WCA website to look at competitors, records, and also find out what competitions are happening soon. WR stands for world record, and for a world record to be official, it must have happened in a WCA competition. But cubing would be less exciting if we couldn't set more records, right? So we also have NR, which stands for national record, so the best in your country. And then we also have CR, which stands for continental record. But on the WCA website, you'll find names specific to each continent, such as NAR, meaning North American record, ASR, meaning Asian record, and so on. Now, if you put a U in front of any of these records, it means unofficial record. So unofficial record just means it didn't happen at a competition, and also there may not be a way for anybody to verify it. So obviously you can tell from the word unofficial that it doesn't mean much, because even if you did catch it on camera, it might have been faked. But it's a lot harder to get away with cheating in an official competition. And very often we see amateur videos where it's very obvious that somebody has faked their solve. But take a look at this 2x2 two two solve that I showed earlier in the video. Now it's not like an unofficial world record or anything, but it still is faked. And I don't know how many of you were able to spot that it's fake. And even if you did notice, can you point out anything in this video that proves it was fake? So when people fake solves, I think it's really stupid because it's like, it's unofficial anyway, it doesn't matter. But I also wanted to see like how easy it is to fake one and get away with it. So that's why I had one in this video and wanted to see it as an experiment if anyone could figure it out. And the lesson here is that if you see a solve that seems too good to be true, maybe it is. But you know, maybe it's not. With the lucky enough scramble, I could totally have gotten that two by two time anyway. Yes, finally. The WCA only holds competitions for specific puzzles, such as the 3x3 cube, 4x4, Mega Minx. But then for each of these puzzles, there may be multiple things you can do. For example, for 3x3, there's also blindfolded, and then there's also one hand. These are called events, and you can find the full list of WCA events on the WCA website. But sometimes we shorten these events, and here are some examples. So BLD means blind, and when you say three blind, it doesn't mean you do three cubes blindfolded, it means you do a three by three blindfolded. Four blind would be four by four, and five blind would be five by five. OH stands for one hand, and in conversation we often just say OH, even though one hand is just as easy to say. Squan is sometimes used, and it's short for square one. And FMC stands for Fewest Moves Challenge. This is the event where you get one hour to try and solve a cube in as few moves as possible and record your solution. Cubers love peanut butter, and that's why we describe all of our cubes the same way we describe different types of peanut butter. So I'd say my Waylong GTS2 has a really smooth feel to it. The Valk feels really crunchy. And the Gans Air feels kind of buttery.
But honestly, these terms don't mean much unless you've tried each of these cubes and then heard what people say about them so that you kind of know what each of these terms mean. Like some of them make sense like smooth. And honestly, I don't even know what buttery is supposed to mean unless we're talking about peanut butter. DNF stands for did not finish, and that means that your solve does not count. So it doesn't matter how fast your solve was, it is disqualified. And there can be a few reasons why you receive a DNF. Some examples include not starting the timer properly, using inspection time for more than 17 seconds, or stopping the timer when the cube is more than one turn away from being solved. You can also receive a DNF if your world record solve had a corner twist on the very last turn. Plus two is another type of penalty where a solve gets two seconds added to it. And this can happen if you take more than 15 but less than 17 seconds during inspection, or the cube is not solved and off by one move when you stop the timer. Perm is short for permutation, and that just means where pieces are located, and normally we use the term permutation to refer to PLL, or permutation of the last layer. So it's the last step in the CFOP or ZZ method once you've oriented the last layer, and then you do one more algorithm to solve it. And normally in front of the word perm, we'll have a letter such as J. So J perm just refers to a specific PLL algorithm. So in this case, this is shaped like a J here. That's why we call this J perm. ZBLL is a set of algorithms that can solve the last layer from any position as long as the cross is already made. Now ZB stands for two names that I'm not going to try and pronounce. By the way, there are about 400 and something algorithms, and here's just an example of one of them. Global average means what you normally average. So if you're about to do a solve, approximately what do you think you'll most likely get? There's no one way to determine your global average. You can use a large average such as an average of 100 or an average of 1000. The larger the average, the more accurate, but if you're improving throughout that average, then it also loses accuracy. So normally we just make a guess. So if someone asks me, hey, what's your global average? Then I'm gonna say my global average is around 9.6. Or maybe I would say it's anywhere from nine to 10. All right, and that's it for this video. So if you wanna see more speed cubing tutorials, you can click on any of these links on the screen. And if you have a question or a video suggestion, of course you can leave that in the comments. And that's it for now. See you all next time.